technology. Such a fascinating word, isn't it? One that has endured years upon years of tinkering with its connotation. A word that outstands the automobile, the iPhone, and even fire itself. Technology has fueled our ambitions. Through it, we counter economic barriers to mind and body numbing diseases. According to United Kingdom's Alzheimer's.org, we now have access to devices that remind dementia patients of their responsibilities, hearing and seeing aids, alongside service robots for people with disabilities. Despite all the advantages that come with the uses of technology, we have become subservient to it, dependent on it. Simply put, we crave technology so intensely, for we do not know how to survive without it. During my freshman year, I struggled with many events, such as my grandmother's death, my parents' divorce, which prompted me to find refuge in my solitude. More specifically, on my computer. This unfurled into self-pity and wallowing, which led to a decline in my academics and well-being. I lost myself, and replaced my drive with an often bored sense of being. Now let me tell you, if there's one thing worse than being a couch potato, it's being a technology-consumed couch potato. Seen in a study only three years old, there are 85.8 million iPhone users in the US. That is more or less a fourth of the entire nation's populace that is seemingly being taken by storm via these rectangular contraptions. Why then have we become so enamored and obsessed with an invention that's relatively new? 50 years to the hundreds of thousands of years humans have existed. Perhaps there is a greater consequence to our inclinations for purchasing and using these novelties beyond that of addiction. At our very fingertips, we have a world teeming with global life and variants and cultures. We can meet new people and let them affect us just as we do them. However, this world is only virtual, and living in it is not living at all. Whatever the case may be, it's useless to live so stiffly, purposed and fueled by mobile devices and their expansive capabilities. And teens are often the ones most afflicted by this epidemic. By October 2019, 53% of American juveniles own smartphones by the tender age of 11. Most utilize their phones as creative outlets, as well as to stay up to date and informed in the lives of their peers. Teenagers average up to eight hours a day on their phone, while tweens aged eight to 12 average up to five hours a day on their phone. Anyhow, my teacher and I decided on surveying my peers, delving into their psyches. Unsurprisingly, an overwhelming amount of four plus hours of cell phone usage per day was found. Two, 58.3% of replies pertaining to whether they could survive without their phones consisted of no's, 23.1% consisted of yeses, and the remaining percentages were scattered along a spectrum of specifications. Shocking though, isn't it? Technology has consumed our world without any resistance on our behalves, and it's only snowballing further. Moore's Law, a scientific principle, describes how every two years technology will improve. It will become faster and more capable. In essence, it will evolve while we do so at an alarmingly slower rate. Once, earlier this year, I was subject to a choice. After my phone ringing class, having it sequestered or being given a detention. Now, I did what any reasonable technology craze student would, and I took the detention. No, it wasn't because I had to check the Instagram or the snappy chat constantly. I legitimately <laughs> felt as though I needed it to stay up to date and aware as to what was happening in school. More recently, I underwent the trials of all trials, abandoning my phone, again, in the name of personal advancement. I know, right, I'm basically a survivor at this point. <laughs> Despite my initial reluctance, I found myself more aware of my wants, needs, and responsibilities through being untethered from the technological parasite. Classes became more enjoyable and less so rushed than usual, which is a treat. Perhaps I differ in experience with some, but I've always been a staunch advocate of school and my love for it. There's nothing that can be likened to attending a lecture on a subject to enjoy, especially from someone knowledgeable in the subject itself. I found myself living day to day, rather than moment by moment. Once I arrived home, I changed into a black hoodie, white tennis shorts, and Adidas sneakers. I ran without my phone for 30 minutes or so, though in truth, I didn't even know the time I ran or the laps I ran. My feet carried me endlessly as I became privy to the sounds of the city. I was so fervently entranced that I resolved to climb a tree, and so I did. It took me about 10 minutes or so to find a tree that could initially bolster my weight, but once I did, I hefted myself onto its branches and peered towards the canal laying before me. There I came to the conclusion that the world my contemporaries have come to know is entirely artificial. 
Vaguely, I can remember when Dra was but farmlands, consumed by the thrush and rivers spanning the Everglades. Now, over the course of a decade, it has become a metropolitan hub that can otherwise be known as a melting pot. Sure, technology has contributed to this overall unwelcome change, just as it has through the robotization of humankind. We adhere to schedules and routines, all moderated by the devices we rely so heavily on. As I reclined against that oak branch, I eased into my sentiments and took a nap. So yet, despite all that comes with technology, we are devoted to it. We have built shrines in our living rooms to televisions, decorative cabinets framing them. That is not to say technology is wholly detrimental. As with most things, there is plenty of gray area. Technology improves our lives and keeps us aware at the global level. Yet with all this awareness, we have become remiss to our interpersonal needs. We no longer take a walk just because, or allow ourselves to indulge fully in a vacation. Instead, we live to capture and share, fueling others through similarly perpetuating this cycle. After all, everything we do is not only projected onto those around us, but those countries away, and eventuality, decades away as well. So when all is said and done, posted and texted and tweeted, what we really need to survive this modern era is a greater connection with ourselves. Thank you.